Hey yo, welcome to our channel today. My name is Ken Johnson. I am a 40-year-old office worker, and I had been single my whole life. However, I somehow managed to get my first girlfriend when I turned 40. Let me clarify that I am not unattractive per se, and it was not as if I could not get a girlfriend, but rather, I just did not have the time. I lost my parents as a child and was raised in an orphanage. In the United States, you have to leave the orphanage when you turn 18, so I did not attend college. I started working immediately after finishing high school, and life was not easy. I worked tirelessly every single day, barely earning enough money to support myself. There was absolutely no room in my life for a girlfriend. Eventually, I switched jobs and became employed at my current company. I have worked here for quite some time, but without receiving a promotion. Not having a college degree inevitably puts me at a disadvantage compared to those who do. Well, it is just how it is. Compared to earlier days, I earned better now and had some peace of mind, but before I realized, I turned 40. The notion of having a girlfriend had faded from my thoughts, but then a turning point arrived. A significant project at the company succeeded tremendously, and one day, a celebration party was held. Since I was somewhat involved with the project, I attended the social gathering, seated in a distant corner. My role was merely supportive, and the star of the event was the project leader, a woman named Megan Taylor. Therefore, being tucked away suited me perfectly. Megan was from the same employee batch as me, but she is beautiful, thoughtful, and trusted by her subordinates. Moreover, she comes from an affluent family who built their fortune by dealing in high-end furniture. Though we were from the same batch, our backgrounds could not have been more different. She is the very example of privileged. In fact, it was widely speculated that she was likely to earn a promotion soon owing to her position as project leader. I had conversed with her several times since we joined at the same time, and I also believed she would excel in a position of authority. At the celebration, she was surrounded by her team members, enlivening the atmosphere. I planned to pass time observing her interactions and occasionally chatting with colleagues who occupied the seats around me. Oh, there you are, Ken. It is the farewell event for our successful project. Megan walked up towards me. Her face seemed flushed, probably from drinking alcohol, and she appeared quite tipsy. Well, she was the guest of honor after all. I merely offered support. It would be presumptuous to be grouped together with you, the star of the occasion. I responded politely. What nonsense. It would have been extremely tough without your assistance. Since you dislike drawing attention, I never properly acknowledged you, but you were instrumental as well. Megan reapplied lipstick as she spoke. I simply shrugged, not feeling as if my efforts were exceptional. Megan took the seat next to mine and held out her mobile phone. I do not have your contact number, Ken. I raised my eyebrows in surprise. That is accurate because I did not provide it to you. Come now, let us exchange phone numbers, she insisted brightly. I was stunned by her request. Why on earth would an elegant lady wish to share personal information with a middle-aged, average man such as myself? Despite sharing the same rank at work, Megan was five years my junior. We interacted casually because we were colleagues, but there was no discernible benefit for her to connect with me. Are you listening to me? She pouted slightly. I am paying attention, but may I ask why you desire to exchange contact details with someone ordinary like myself? I asked plainly. Because I wish to keep in touch with you. Please do not be difficult about it, Megan responded with determination. She clung to me persistently, repeating, Go on, let us exchange numbers. Feeling the uncomfortable stares of those surrounding us, I sensed my body tensing up. This situation seemed precarious. If I did not handle it carefully, I might be accosted by a member of Maiden's admirers. Are you absolutely certain about this? I attempted one final time to dissuade her. Yes, I am completely convinced. Now, let us proceed with exchanging contact information, she stated firmly with an air of finality. Very well, I agree to share my details with you. I acquiesced reluctantly. But in that moment, I assumed her request merely reflected an alcohol-influenced impulsive decision and that she would likely forget about it the following morning. Megan looked utterly delighted as she stored my phone number. 
Just when I thought I could finally relax, surprisingly, this exchange sparked the beginning of frequent communication with Megan. Initially, we simply exchanged brief good morning and good night messages, but gradually, our conversations expanded to include evening drinks, work stressors, and became increasingly lengthy. These text dialogues eventually transformed into regular phone calls. Finally, we progressed to meeting in person over meals to converse face to face. If I am being honest, interacting with her brought me tremendous happiness. Perhaps we had excellent rapport, but I believe Megan and I possessed strong compatibility as individuals. Ken, you do not have a romantic partner presently, correct? Megan inquired one evening over dinner. If I did, I certainly would not be here sharing a meal alone with you, I pointed out reasonably. Haha, <laughs> accurate observation. Regardless, I am glad to hear it, she laughed in response. One day, Megan and I were dining together at a restaurant. While an elegant lady such as herself would seem more suitably accompanied at an upscale venue, she graciously accommodated my modest lifestyle by joining me at everyday eateries and bars. Initially, I felt ashamed, but she genuinely appeared to enjoy exploring unfamiliar local establishments, so I ceased worrying about it. It pleases you that I am unattached? I asked directly. At this stage, I presume I shall remain permanently single, I remarked candidly. That prediction is inaccurate. In truth, I hope to marry you one day, Ken, she stated simply. I promptly choked on my beer, sputtering and coughing violently at her unexpected declaration. I stared wordlessly at her sincere expression. Do you not reciprocate my feelings? She asked plainly. I care deeply for you, but I am not adequately worthy of your affections. I explained apologetically once I regained composure. Well, I believed a genuine connection has grown between us these last months. Was I mistaken in that perception? She tilted her head questioningly. I struggled internally for the right words. I agreed a strong bond had formed over time. Moreover, if I let this prospect vanish, I would likely stay unmarried permanently. I had to acknowledge I desired companionship, despite initial disinterest in romance. I presumed even if we did date, we would probably separate quickly. The environments we were raised in differ enormously. Romance can sometimes lead to disenchantment, so I avoided significant expectations, even though. My voice trailed off uncertainly. Will you consent to be my husband? Before I fully processed the significance of the moment, a year later I was presenting a diamond ring to Megan and proposing marriage. At 41 years old, I had finally discovered someone willing to make a lifelong commitment to me. An inevitable ritual precedes matrimony, meeting your intended's parents. Since I was orphaned, the custom only applied one-sidedly to me. Moreover, I would be interfacing with an ultra-wealthy family. Seeking parental permission for their daughter's hand was guaranteed to amplify my nerves. Anxiety was inescapable. Do not worry, mother and father will be understanding, Megan reassured me confidently, beaming radiantly. In contrast, my complexion paled worryingly. Consider the scenario objectively, their beloved daughter, pride and darling of the family, presents a middling 40-year-old high school graduate raised in an orphanage without relatives as her chosen life partner. Furthermore, I cannot even recall my deceased father's visage. He perished in an accident before my birth, and my mother died from illness when I was approximately four years old. Effectively, I am a solitary aging man devoid of family ties. If I inhabited their shoes, I would be outraged. They cannot possibly approve this mismatch. But I sincerely cherish Megan, who herself desires our union fervently. If humility grants me any favor, I shall humble myself and visited her parents in that spirit. While agonizing over strategies to handle potential friction, I arrived at the impressive family estate. Welcome. We are overjoyed you could join us. A gracious lady bearing strong resemblance to Megan greeted us at the front entrance. This was Megan's mother, Susan. Provided Megan ages well, she would closely mirror her elegant mother. I lacked opportunity to ponder this further. I entered their luxurious home, feeling intensely self-conscious. Allow me to state this outright. Contrary to expectations, outraged reactions were absent. Why not? How did they respond? 
Because visible surfaces do not feature furniture constructed from standard materials. Instead, polished decorative pieces that resemble foreign imports occupy every space. I described feeling wholly out of my element surrounded by such opulence. I berated myself internally for bringing this refined young woman, accustomed to an elevated lifestyle, to humble taverns and pubs. My stomach churned with shame. Come now, make yourself comfortable, dear. Greet our guest properly, Susan gently chided her silent husband. I was escorted into what appeared to be a sophisticated living area and seated awkwardly on an exquisitely plush couch. Across from me sat a stern-looking older gentleman, Megan's father. Yes, that imposing man is Megan's father. Father, mother, allow me the pleasure of introducing you to Ken Johnson, the gentleman I am seeing, Megan announced brightly. I am Ken Johnson, I confirmed nervously, bowing my head briefly before meeting their eyes. I was unable to restrain my gaping mouth. For inexplicable reasons, Megan's parents' eyes were rounded with shock. Flustered, Susan inquired gently, Could, would you repeat your full name once more? Did I say something inappropriate? As I stated, I am Ken Johnson, I repeated confusedly. Please excuse the odd question, but was your late mother named Karen Johnson? Furthermore, did she pass from illness? I grew perplexed by her unexpected words. I had informed Megan of my orphan status, but never revealed my parents' names or causes of death. I can scarcely believe this, Susan proclaimed as tears brimmed in her eyes. She grasped my hand and passed me a framed photograph positioned near the window. The image captured two women. One was Susan and the other was, wait, mother. Yes, the one with you is my departed mother. I vaguely recollected her features and there she was captured alongside you. Were you acquainted with my mother previously? Acquainted, she was my savior. Susan exclaimed while dabbing moisture from her eyes using a lace handkerchief. She proceeded to share her incredible story. In the past, Susan endured a critical illness that necessitated hospitalization at a reputed medical institution. Grin diagnoses provided minimal life expectancy. Given the hopeless prognosis, Susan lapsed into depression. During this vulnerable period, she encountered my mother, who was admitted at the same hospital, residing on the same floor. Their first meeting occurred in a common lounge area. Your mother's health was rapidly declining. Therefore, we bonded quickly, Susan described nostalgically. The two women immediately developed close rapport and often conversed within the hospital rooms. Therein, your mother learned of me, Susan's son housed in a care center. I must retrieve my son from his residence. It is wrong to lie about returning for him. You should certainly collect him without delay, my mother had admonished Susan sternly. That is impossible. My limited lifespan prohibits it, Susan countered despairingly. My insightful mother comprehended her underlying reasons. Faced with diminished time left, she shared wisdom with Susan. I feel such deep regret at abandoning my duties as a mother. I wish to earn my son's pride, even briefly. However, he might forget my face entirely since he is only three years currently, my mom had apparently confessed sadly. How I wish I could witness my son mature. He has such an adorable appearance, look here. My mom eagerly showcased Susan a treasured photograph she kept during hospitalization. My child has a fine countenance. His distinguished nose guarantees handsome features in adulthood. As his mother, I am biased, but he is the most precious boy in existence to me. I am merely a doting parent, am I not? My mother seemed to relish opportunities to praise me, and Susan invited the profound bond. Observing your dynamic, I am jealous. Due to my illness, having children of my own is likely implausible, Susan shared wistfully. Listen, I experienced an extraordinary dream, my mother whispered suddenly. A dream? Please elaborate, Susan encouraged curiously. I envisioned you cradling gorgeous twin daughters, blessings personified, my mother described animatedly. Susan laughed with surprise. What caused such a specific scene? It was merely a fanciful dream. Indeed, but feminine intuition can prove accurate. My sixth sense is never wrong, my wise mother asserted confidently.
These words constituted the final lucid conversation held between the women. My mother's health failed swiftly thereafter. She slipped away peacefully in sleep. Her abrupt departure devastated me, but I located a sealed letter addressed to me among her hospital possessions. Susan retrieved an aged letter from her desk drawer and presented it to me respectfully. My mother's elegant writing decorated the envelope containing a note and jewelry. My mother's flowing script addressed the message to you. I began reading immediately. The brief letter conveyed, To Susan, your destiny remains unfulfilled. You must continue onward. Within its folds, a gleaming ring set with colorful stones emerged. This jewel originated from my mother's hand. Her reasons for entrusting it to you elude me, but I resolved to someday return the ring to her beloved son. Perhaps my determination to complete this task aided my recovery, Susan speculated thoughtfully. Clasping my hand gently around the paper, Susan continued in a hushed tone. Your mother protected someone irreplaceably precious to me. Can you promise to similarly safeguard my daughter? I brushed lingering tears away, recognizing the gravity of this pledge between men. Yes, you have my utmost vow to cherish and delight her all our days, I declared unwaveringly. Several years later, I hurried anxiously along a hospital corridor towards my wife's private suite, resisting the urge to break into a full run. I was headed to meet Megan, who had recently endured childbirth. Megan. I called out joyfully upon approaching her room. There she was, seated comfortably in bed. I rushed to embrace Megan, but hesitated, cautious of her recovering state. Your fortitude humbles me. Thank you profoundly for this gift, beloved. I squeezed her fingers warmly, overwhelmed with emotion. Come now, why spill tears before you have met our children? They eagerly await their father's affection. Megan tilted her head towards two bassinets stationed at her bedside containing newborns. My vision clouded immediately at the miraculous sight. I wept unreservedly gazing at the sleeping angels, tiny hands interlocked. Mother, your legacy continues unbroken. Please rejoice peacefully at this evidence, I whispered fervently. Interestingly, the twin daughters birthed by Megan perfectly fulfilled my late mother's prognostication. I record this account as evidence that human connections can surpass the barriers of time and mortality. My mother wove an intricate tapestry infusing hope and meaning into her family's narrative before fate separated us. However, her formidable influence persisted through Susan's intervention, ultimately guiding my union with Megan. My mother therefore blessed me with the family she dreamed I would establish one day. For this opportunity to honor her, I remain forever indebted. Thank you so much for joining us on this heartful journey. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more captivating tales. Your support means the world to us, and we look forward to bringing you more stories in the future. Until next time, take care and happy storytelling.